Good evening and welcome to another DXB Today. Looking forward to this one. Why? Food, food everywhere and plenty for us to eat. Because I think it's safe to say that Dubai has very much become a culinary capital of the world. Why so? Well, whatever cuisine you might fancy, you'll find it right here in this city. And tonight we hope to shine a spotlight on that. Here's what's to come. We have a delicious episode lined up for you. Ahmed went down to meet Chef Brian Huang's Sunobi Chu Izakaya. Plus, we will be talking to Indian celebrity chef, Master Chef Judge Ranveer Bada will be joining us live in studio. And if you've never heard of Mission Ceviche, don't worry, we sent Amy down to Sushi Samba, so we'll learn a little bit more later. Ain't just about the food that we're serving up tonight. We're also serving up some great entertainment for you a little later on. We'll have Mirrors performing tonight from one of the top musical and foodie venues in town. Music, food, what more can we give you? Looking forward to this one. You know I love my food. We all love our food yes. around this sofa here. And it is, I know it's one of those phrases that we throw away all the time, but Dubai is the culinary capital of the world now. Absolutely, because there's a little something for everyone. Irrespective of what culture you come from, you will find your favorite dining spot in this city because there are so many options. And just before you've narrowed down your favorites, there'll be 10 others that would have opened the following week. That's exactly what I was going to say. You've nailed your favorites and then all of a sudden, there's just so many venues opening more and more and more. But you can't ignore those classics. We're so lucky here because, as you say, it's everywhere around the world world right here in Dubai. It's reflective of the, the demographic here, isn't it? Yeah. What the age old thing, there's over 200 nationalities calling Dubai home at the moment. And every part of that, every community they're in wants a taste of home. And they create that taste of home, they bring it there. So you can find some really authentic dishes. But what I love is the fusion. Mm. And how we're seeing so many sort of unique concepts now rising up where all those sort of flavours are come in. And we're giving it a little bit of a Dubai stamp of approval <laughs> as well and the world loves it yeah they do and they come here for it and obviously you know the 50 greatest and the Michelin and everything that's been happening more and more in the UAE is amazing you talk about fusion very randomly I played paddle the other day with a Peruvian Japanese girl and I was like hang on <laughs> I'm hungry just <laughs> think just <laughs> playing and I feel like if you are a true foodie, you don't necessarily have to dine at the, the fancy schmancy places. I mean, I'm from India and I love me a bit of Indian food. And mm. when I think of Indian food, I typically tend to head down to Old Dubai, to Karama, Bird Dubai, because that's where some of the hidden gems are. And those places literally never get old for me. Do you agree, Tom? Completely. Authenticity is key. Yeah, it's great to have the big brands. It's great to have uh, the, the, the glitzy brands out there. But the homegrown brands, that are really ripping up trees at the moment and making headlines are, uh, are absolutely something that we must respect and of course celebrate. Absolutely, speaking of homegrown brands, let's find out who our guest co-host today is. Hey guys, my name is Suleiman. I'm the chef in the corner of Moonrise in Dubai and I can't wait to see you guys all in the studio. Yep, Suleiman will be joining us a little bit later. But before that, Amy went down to the award-winning Sushi Samba restaurant, blending the cuisines of Japan, Peru and Brazil in the city to take a look at Mission Ceviche. Here to offer some Peruvian specials. Let's take a look at what she got up to. Today we're embarking on a culinary adventure like no other. I'm here at the prestigious award-winning restaurant Sushi Samba, where something exciting is happening in the kitchen. We have got a unique collaboration between Mission Ceviche and Sushi Samba that is going to get your taste buds tingling. So joining me now is Chef Jose from Mission Ceviche and Chef Moon from Sushi Samba. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking to me. So let's jump straight in. It's two years of Sushi Samba. Congratulations. <laughs> 
Well, why did you decide to do the co collaboration with Mission Ceviche? So we tried to endure some like this turning two years. We tried to some like motivation. So it means we are to not like the only selling the food. We selling of the color, culture, nice music, fantastic 360 view. Fantastic. So can you tell me a little bit about Mission Ceviche and why you wanted to come and do the collaboration with Sushi Samba? <laughs> yeah, we we share same patterns with the Sushi Samba, right? Like we want to uh, people not only have a good food, but also have the experience. When the chef Moon contact me, I don't talk about. It was instant. You knew you were like, I'm going to Dubai. I'm oh, there, chef. Come with me. Come with us. Can we just explain to them, chef, what is ceviche and why is it such an important part of Peruvian cuisine? So basically, if we're going to the, the point of techniques, is fish, marinated or cure. I would say cure on fresh lime and citrus, right? So I would say fish, citrus. Chili pepper, you have to get this touch of spicy, red onions, salt, and pretty much the chef. Incredible. Well, it's very healthy. I, I was going to say it's very healthy. I love ceviche. I live off it, in fact. So for me, I'm excited to get in the kitchen. Can't wait to also try out your recipe because you're going to teach me in the kitchen and uh, try out that culinary flavor experience in the kitchen. Are you ready to Let's teach do it. me how to make a ceviche? Let's go. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Guys, what are we going to do right now? We are going to make the glass of Peruvian ceviche. I'm going to give you all the secrets. Okay. Okay? It's just for you and for you too. Nada más. <laughs> okay? So, you know, the, the, the cool thing is you're going to make it. Okay. All right? So, this is a white fish. Can you add it to the bowl? Yeah. So, this is a sea it's bass? A sea bass. Okay, Very okay, important, okay. fresh fish, okay? Next, you're gonna add one spoon, don't put too much, uh, red habanero. Get a fresh, perfect. How spicy are we going? <laughs> oh, I like spicy, I think that one is good. So now we're gonna add a little bit of salt. Let me help you with the salt, okay? okay? And now you're gonna add one spoon of ají amarillo, Peruvian chili paste. So another very important ingredient is the lime, fresh lime that you can see here. I got this fresh lime, which is already like infusion it with red, um, red habanero one more time. We got onions, cilantro, we got ginger, and uh, celery. All right, so we add the tiger meal. Can you see the colors? So vibrant. So I want you to try, please, a little bit of tiger meal. Okay. Mm. Mm. Tangy, fresh. A little spice, not too much. We are gonna go to the plating. Okay. So now, important, very important. We the tiger all... meal is going to the plate. Look at that. Now, we got these red red okay. onions. We have it in ice cold water. Okay. So this is gonna go on top. This is micro cilantro. Yep, beautiful. We got some uh, borage here, which is just a purple uh, flower, just to give it an extra beautiful. color. Beautiful. We're gonna serve this with the collaboration of Mission Ceviche and Sushi Samba. Amazing. There we go, guys. I had an incredible time in the kitchen with Chef Moon and Chef Jose, and this collaboration is the definition of fusion cuisine. If you want to check it out, then head on down to Sushi Samba. Yeah, lucky old Amy dining at one of the hot spots around town, Sushi Samba. Just one of those international brands that have come to buy and made it their home. But you know what? I'm looking forward to this because we've got a true rock star of the culinary scene with us here. Today's guest co-host is a 26-year-old chef who founded his restaurant to create a a niche dining experience in the heart of the city, drawing inspiration from the rich tapestry of cultures across the region as a whole. Now, please welcome the founder of Dubai's intimate Michelin star, Domokasia Restaurant. It is Moonrise. It is the one and only Solomon Haddad. Great to have you here, Chef. Thank you so much. Really How's kind of you. I know that it's you, mate. I know that you've got busy, busy, busy at the moment. And yeah. Service is just around the corner, so we can't <laughs> thank is. you enough for, for joining no, us. Of course, of course. Let's um. Let's talk about the moonrise, shall we? I mean, yeah. 
the story I find fascinating. Explain to the rest of the team and, of course, our viewers. Yeah. How did you get that moon to rise? Um, I guess I never really intended on opening a restaurant, but I never wanted to leave Dubai as well and like learn abroad. So I guess I was in this position where I had to teach myself because at the time, five years ago, the food scene was not even 5% of what it is now. It was really at the very, even before the beginning, you know? So I had to really teach myself everything because there was nowhere I could work that could teach me. Mm. And one thing led to another. I kept on going through every single door that was not, I just kept on opening every door, whichever one wasn't locked, I was going through until somehow I ended up owning a restaurant at 25, opening even a restaurant at 25, which was never part of the plan. But I think when these things are not part of the plan and you do them, it's, it becomes very genuine and it becomes really like, I don't know, it, 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 it just, it's just a very, uh, just in terms of, you know, when you set out, and a lot of people will say, okay, if you want to open a restaurant, Solomon, you've got to do it this way. You've got to be in DIFC. Yeah. You've got to have it that way. You've got to see all your training, etc. You did things differently. I, I was just talking to one of the, the guests that's going to be coming in in a, in a moment, Chef Junior, and I was telling him how for me it was always like a mission. I'm never opening a restaurant in a hotel. Mm. But again, I, was, I never intended on opening a restaurant in the first place. So it was, it was uh, very genuine. It wasn't planned. It was more out of... I guess I need to do this more than I guess I want to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think that that puts that, that fire under you that you, you just have to do it to survive, to grow. And, and then, uh, I, I don't know, I'm just happy that we, 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 we developed this from, our, from my own formula, I guess, mm -hmm. because there's no one telling me what to do. There's no one telling me this recipe is done the wrong way. Mm -hmm. There's no um, big organization tasting my food, telling me this is too salty or this is too sour. I'm just literally doing whatever I want. And my only guideline is I have to represent Dubai. I have to represent the Middle East. I have to use as many local ingredients as possible. And it has to taste insane. <laughs> nothing else matters. Literally nothing else matters. Well, everything you know? is working. That's Talking true. about the dining experience, which is what I'm most excited about, the whole Omakase dining uh, experience, yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. It literally means I you leave are. it to you, where the customer leaves it to yeah. the will of the chef to serve them up their seasonal specialties. I personally, I eat everything. I'm not fussy. So I think someone like me would be an ideal candidate rather than somebody who has more dietary restrictions you know what we actually get a lot of like like they're not difficult with us but like hey like my wife or my husband or my son or whatever my friend is very difficult just like ignore them if they give you feedback so <laughs> so and we always make them happy you know what i mean it's almost like we the, the way i cook i look for i look for a way to make food taste universally good so if it's someone like you that will enjoy it or if it's someone not like you that may think twice before before joining us. It's really about like making food taste as universally delicious as possible. Mm. So uh, I, I, I I encourage people that, that like don't know challenge. what it's gonna, yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, if someone is like gluten free and I use soy sauce in all literally all of my dishes, that's obviously a red line, yeah. like of for course. their health, you know yeah, what I mean? Of but like when we're talking just like they can eat anything and they're picky, I encourage that I want them to come to my <laughs> restaurant because I want them to see how food good, how good, sorry, food can taste if they give me that trust. Yeah. That is, that, you know? that is a, a challenge right there. I love that. So make sure you head down there if you're challenged. <laughs> um, I want to speak to you about going back to you, it all being a surprise and it not being planned that you were going to own this restaurant at 25, by the way. Um, what has been the biggest surprise of all since opening your own restaurant, good and bad? Um, I think for me, like the biggest challenge and like, like I always say this to like, I, I'll say that the, the surprise from a challenge, I'll start from the challenge yes, point of view yeah. and then we'll end with the, on the, on the, on the better <laughs> yeah, note of that nice. question. No, but it's also important, you know, like I get asked all the time, like people tell me, hey, uh, can you like encourage people to join this industry? And I always say, no, I'm not going to encourage anyone to join this industry because it's a beautiful industry. It's an amazing industry, but it's a very hard one. So it's really something that you really have to want. You really have to fight for and you really have to push yourself mm. to get into. And I think for me, like it's been so hard in, 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 in many ways because I'm the chef and the owner. I'm the general manager. I, I, I guess when you open your own business, there is so much work that that you really have to be ready for, for everything. It's not the only thing you recently got as well. Small matter of a Michelin star. Um, <laughs> Michelin hasn't been in this town that long. The fact that Moonrise, and, and, and a venue of your scale, gets recognized by one of the greatest restaurant guides in the world. From a, from a restaurateur, from a creator, from a pioneer's point of view, blessing or curse for you? Um, Ooh, nice. Definitely a blessing, for mm -hmm. sure. I, I always say like uh, there are awards which are for your ego, which I personally care less about because I just care about quality of yeah. work. And there are awards which really like they pave the way for your future. Mm -hmm. And replying the second half of your question, which is the good surprises, okay. something like getting a Michelin star, even for me personally, getting the Young Chef uh, Award the yeah. first year of Michelin, yeah. almost two years ago now, that really paves a very healthy way for your future. Mm -hmm. And I guess the stress is 
maintaining it. Yeah. But but even when we got a star, I told my I went to the restaurant. The first thing I told my staff, I'm like, guys, if we are in the defense, we're gonna be insecure the whole year. But we're on the offense. We want two stars now. <laughs> and when you think in that way, you're much less insecure and you're more. How can I be better? Where's the mistakes? Where's the one percent? Where's the where's the, you you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So um, so no, it, it's it's definitely been a blessing and 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 also learning the learning curve as hard as it was to get that information. I bet. I always tell people when they join my restaurant because it's so small, it's like when you join my restaurant, they, maybe they have a university degree. I tell them, I promise you, in the first four months, you're going to learn more than you did in four years of yeah, university. Yeah, Sounds about you right. Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chef Solomon, there's so much more to talk to you. We have a foodie packed episode, so please stick around with us. Now it's time to find out who is playing us out tonight. Hello, everybody. We are The Mirrors, an acoustic trio based in Dubai. We are Jimmy from Egypt, Michael from England, and Luisa from Colombia. After the break, we will be talking to Indian celebrity chef and master chef judge Ranveer Bra about his latest offering right here in the city. So I would not move a muscle.